This is a video. Hopefully I'll be able to keep it short, but knowing me, I won't. I'll get long-winded and keep babbling on. Hey everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you continue to have a wonderful day. And many thanks for stopping by Dancing Credit Acres. My name's Dean. All right guys, this is a video. Hopefully I'll be able to keep it short, but knowing me, I won't. I'll get long-winded and keep babbling on. Uh, that was inspired by some customers that came into the lumber yard that I work at and they picked up materials to build themselves a chicken coop. And during while I was helping them get their materials, got talking about my hobby farm and that, you know, they asked me questions and they asked me what I used to raise and so forth. And I told them, you know, or what I raise. And, uh, I told them, you know, goats and chickens and I used to raise quail and I used to have ducks and, uh, the quail kind of perked their interest and they got asking me some more questions about it. So this is inspired by those customers. And there's also been comments on some of my quail videos that I thought I should address. So, uh, the first thing is, is, uh, you can feed them handfuls of grass, you know, especially if it's got the grass seeds on the top, they love that stuff because that is something that they naturally used to grab. Uh, you can find them like fresh grasshoppers or little beetles and that, and just kind of Pinch them and crush them a little bit to where, I don't want to say that they're dead, but basically they are. They're paralyzed and they can't get away from the birds and jump around inside the cage. And they will gobble those things up. If you got a garden, you can give them your garden greens and that, you know. Uh, bits of spinach, uh, carrot tops. Uh, used to slice uh, cucumbers every once in a while and give them a chunk of cucumber, you know. Uh, watermelon rind. They like watermelon rind. I don't think I ever tried pumpkin with them, but uh, I would assume that they would pick at the pumpkin. But, you know, you can use some of your garden greens. Just do some research before you start throwing your garden greens in there uh, or garden stuff in there because there could be some stuff that is very bad for them, uh, like toxic bad, and that would be bad. Uh Let's see. Let's say you want to become self-sufficient and not have to rely on the grocery stores. And I'm not talking the mom and pop little town grocery stores. I'm talking the big chain grocery stores, you know, uh, that who knows where they're getting their products from. And you want to do it with quail. How many quail do you need for a year? Uh, that depend on the number of quail that you plan on eating at each meal and how how many meals of quail you're going to have. We'll just use quick, we're going to have one quail at supper every night for a whole year. Simple answer, 365 quail you will need. Do you have to raise that many? No. N well, you have to raise that many. Do you have to keep on hand that many? No, you don't. Myself, when I get back into raising quail, I'm going to probably do, start out with 24 birds. Uh, I'll probably order in, I mean, that's that's my minimum start point, is 24. Uh, I'll probably order through one of the hatcheries that have Caternix quail, uh, 50 eggs, because I can incubate. Uh, around 73 eggs between my two incubators. And that brings me to another point. Unless you've got a source to where you can go and get live quail chicks, you're going to need an incubator. Do some home, homework, folks. Find you an incubator that has an auto egg tray that is specially designed for quail. The ones I've got are designed for chickens, 
One of them I was able to modify easy enough to do quail eggs. Wasn't it they didn't hold the quail eggs securely? It was I couldn't get them out of the little egg cup that the egg set in with my pudgy fat fingers. So I had to uh, make a little ring, plastic ring that fit in there and I hot glued it in and the quail eggs fit in there and I can take them out when I need to. Uh, you'll need a brooder or two or three. Kind of same with the incubators. Uh, depending on the number of eggs you want to incubate and what your capacity is. There is a video I hope to be doing on building this brooder that was inspired by another YouTuber. I'll put a link to his video in the description. I will throw some cards in this video also uh, on information on the quail uh, as far as nutritional values and or facts. You'll need cages of some sort to house your quail in. There's no limit to what you can use uh, as far as housing your quail. You can go to the pet store and buy bird cages. They kind of get a little cramped. So you got to keep your numbers down. You can build your own cages. I've got a video on uh, grow out cage, which a grow out cage is just a K empty cage that you can put young birds in and let them grow to maturity if you're sending them off to freezer camp. So the grow out cage can be a house cage for keeping your birds to raise up more birds. Uh, a storage device to store your eggs while you're collecting eggs after you've, mm, excuse me, have raised up your quail. Your hen to rooster ratio, three hens, four hens, three to four hens, fingers weren't wanting to work, to one rooster. You could go a little more than that, but you risk the chance of the fertility of the eggs the fertility rate not being that high or dropping, which in turn drop your hatch rate because if the egg's not fertile, it won't hatch or it won't, a, a chick won't grow in it and hatch. Uh, let's see, what else? Honestly, I, right now I cannot think of anything else. Uh, Feed, as far as feed for the birds, commercial feed. I used to use Purina's uh, Game Bird feed. It's a 30% protein, which I found worked best for me. There was a feed store owner that I got in a debate about the protein level. He said that that was too high. I said it was fine. He said that I should only be feeding them 24%. And... I couldn't get the print at the time from where I was getting it, so he had one that was 28%. I did not notice that huge of a production drop in the eggs with the 28% compared to the 30, where I did notice it. It was like a 20 to almost 25% drop in production of eggs was dropping down to 24%. Now, could it have been that because my birds were on that 30%, most of their lives, and then I dropped them, changed their protein diet down. Could be. I, I, I don't know. Uh, what I do know is, is that 24% protein, I lost 20 to 25% egg production. Uh, and that, that was unacceptable to me. Let's see. Uh, I think I did cover the garden thing. I hope I did anyways. You can feed them garden greens, just make sure you know what you're feeding them, that it's safe for the birds. You can also, and I, I did, sorry, I'm losing track of where I'm at with this. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, make sure you keep them with fresh water. Make yourself, if you buy them, get yourself a couple bottle or a couple waterers for the chick, the quail, for each cage that you've got. If you got an, if you use an open aviary like I did and 
the stack cages, uh, both of them. You're, depending on your climate, you might have to have a heated bucket for them to uh, have fresh water. Or you got to carry out lots of water because it'll freeze in the winter months. Uh, let's see, what else? Guys, I, I almost think that that's it. Uh, and the reason I say a couple different waters for them is, is the water will get scummy over time. Uh, algae will start to build up in the bottles. So you need to be able to switch out the bottles, keep them with fresh water, and clean the bottles. Of course, feeder. Uh, yeah, guys, that's, that's about it. Uh, space confinement and, uh, would also determine the numbers. If, if you got to do stack cages and you've only got a very small area that you can do the stack cages in, I would go as many stack cages as possible, leaving enough room for your manure catch tray to catch all the droppings that the birds are going to produce. And let me tell you folks, they produce a lot of droppings really, really fast. Uh, so, you know, change that out regularly. In fact, I would have an extra I would have at least one extra catch tray so that way as you pulled one out you could put the new one in or a fresh one in, clean the one off, do the same, switch, just keep switching out until you had all your manure catch trays cleaned. Uh, so yeah, space confinement, or how much space you can do. If you can do a two by three or even a two by two cage, you can house three to six birds in those size cages. And a two by two, you could probably get five birds in there and be okay. Uh, sometimes they go wacky in the head and start killing each other off. In a two by two, four you should be safe. In a two by three, six you should be safe. Uh, and there again, you know, eight to ten inches for a cage, plus another couple inches for manure catch trays. You could, you know, go five feet high with your cages and have four cages, and you know, have anywhere from sixteen to 24 birds easy enough and then your grow out cages and there again like I said the grow out cages they're just an empty cage something for you to put the young birds in until they get mature enough so that's that's about it guys I, I'm, I'm almost 99.9% .9 positive that that's about it in fact I'm, I'm sure enough because I'm also looking at the clock or the timer on this video and I'm approaching 14 minutes of time, which is about long enough for you guys to listen to me. I greatly appreciate you guys bearing with me and listening to me. So I am going to go ahead and sign off here, folks. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you continue to have a wonderful day. Many thanks for stopping by the channel. You guys take care of yourselves. Best wishes to each and every one of you. I look forward to catching you guys in the next video. This is Dean from Dancing Crater Acres signing off. Bye, everybody.